Seekers, I'm Nick. We've had the Aorus Liquid Cooler 240 for a little while now, and we've had mountains of questions about it since we used it in one of our Bit Phoenix builds. So I decided I would start to answer some of those insulation questions for AMD AIM4 based systems by showing you how to install it. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install the brand new Aorus Liquid Cooler 240 in an AMD AIM4 based system. Exactly like the video title says. Let's do it. This video is for demonstration purposes only. This is not a review. Every system, every motherboard, every case, every fan placement and every setup is different. So make sure you do a little bit of research to see what will fit in your case before going out and buying any parts for any builds that you do. Now, this guide is to give you the fundamental idea of how to install the Aorus Liquid Cooler 240 on an AM4 based system. This guide will also be applied to the 280 and 360 versions of this cooler as well. So yeah, make sure you watch the entire video before you ask any questions because chances are, I'm gonna answer the inevitable questions in this video anyway. So with that said, let's start off by answering some of those questions right off the bat. The motherboard in this video is the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master. The case used is the Fantex Eclipse P400A and the CPU is the Ryzen 7 3700X. These parts were chosen purely for demonstration purposes only. Yes, the installation is very similar to many toolless Acer Tech coolers. Yes, the fan placement in this video is correct. It also depends on your case and the clearances for your case. Yes, it's RGB and it's also addressable RGB. Yes, it comes with the RGB fan shown. Yes, you can put whatever fans you want on it, anything that you like. Yes, everything that you're seeing in this video for insulation is included in the box. Yes, it will work with almost every single AM4 motherboard and CPU combo you're gonna ask about in the comment section from the launch of Ryzen into the foreseeable future, but I would recommend Gigabyte or Aorus boards only. No, it will not work with Aorus Sync, Mystic Light, or Polychrome RGB. It only works with RGB Fusion. Yes, the RGB and fan wiring is the same for both Intel and AM the insulations. Yes, the thermal paste is included, but it's pre-applied. And no, you don't have to fill the cooler up at all or do any type of maintenance. You don't have to do anything. Just leave it as it is. And there's no unboxing because yeah, the, the cooler doesn't come with a lot of extras anyway. And all of the lighting is controlled in software. So there's no additional controllers. Anyway, let's dive right into that installation. You'll find that after this guide that this is actually one of the easiest CPU coolers to install on the market. To mount it to your motherboard, you only need these parts here. Okay, what else are you gonna need? You're going to need this bracket. Now this bracket is for AM4 installation only. We do have an Intel guide coming at a later date, but like the title of this video mentions, this is for AM4 only. The only other thing you're really going to need are these two addressable RGB fans that also come with the liquid cooler. These cannot be bought separately and they have their own RGB connector that's not compatible with anything else. All right, let's get right into it. Locate these four bolts. Now there's only four of these and this is for AM4 mounting only. What we're going to do is actually use the stock backplate that comes with your motherboard. There is no backplate solution with this cooler other than than the stock one. What we're going to do is go ahead and remove the original mounting hardware, which the, the, the retention clips rather. And the way that I would recommend doing this so you don't have to faff around with stuff falling out is remove one side first, like I'm showing here in the video. And then what we're going to do is get the bolts with the kit and install only two of them on one side first. And this will prevent the back plate from falling out. And once you're done doing it to that side, rinse and repeat that process on the other side of the retention system. And that way the backplate won't fall out when you're trying to move your board around. Now one of the questions we get asked many many times in the comment section is where can you get these if you've lost them? The best way to get these if you've lost them is to not lose them at all. So put them in a safe place because you might need them later in case you want to sell your board. Locate this bracket, the one that we showed earlier in the video. And what you're going to want to do is remove the stock Intel bracket that comes on the cooler. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Just put your fingers in opposing corners and push in and rotate counterclockwise to unlock the clip. Now I'm going to do this a couple more times just so you can see how easy this is. And yeah, and just reverse that process to install the AM4 bracket. 
But what you'll notice here, it is the reverse of removal of the Intel. So what you want to do is put it in and rotate it clockwise to lock it into place. You'll also notice that on our cooler, there is no thermal paste. There is pre-applied thermal paste when you buy this brand new. But because we've used this cooler before, I've obviously cleaned it off and removed it. But I did put thermal paste on the CPU when actually installing and testing this cooler. Right, locate all eight of these bolts, I'm only showing four because it's easier to hold for. And what we're going to do is we're then going to install the radiator on the inside of the case. And we're going to install the fans on the outside of the case because that's the way you would install it with this case, which is the Fantex P400A. Now, the way that I recommend doing this is putting a bolt through one of the fans and lining it up with one of the holes and then then just finger tighten it. And that way the radiator won't go anywhere. That way the fan won't go anywhere. And just rinse and repeat that process until all of the bolts for all of the fans are in. It's nice and easy. Shouldn't take you too long. And yeah, it just prevents it from falling out. And just so you don't have to use a screwdriver straight off the bat. Then grab your screwdriver and fasten all of the corners up. And rinse and repeat that process until it's all nice and tight and snug as a bug in a rug. Once you're done with that, you want to feed the fan cables through to the back side of your system. It's going to make it a lot easier for cable management and for the next step where we're actually going to plug everything in and make it all work. Locate four of these thumb nuts and what we're going to do now is actually install the pump top and water block onto the top of the CPU. It's pretty straightforward, just line it up with the bolts that we installed at the beginning and use those thumb nuts. Yes, I know people think it's funny that I call them thumb nuts, but that's what they are. And just tighten them by hand. And you can rinse and repeat that process until you do every single corner. And I just wanted to show you how easy these go in. See, nice and easy. You don't have to do them too tight. You don't want to use tools or do it up too tight because you might damage your motherboard. You'll notice you've got these nest of cables. What you want to do is actually feed that through to the back side of your system so we can plug everything in and cable management all nicely. Now, I'm, I'm just going to make this clear. This is not a guide for cable management. This is a demonstration to show you how to connect this up for your system. And obviously your system could possibly be different. Right, let's plug in the PWM connectors for the fan. Uh, there will be one cable that comes off the pump top that's labeled fan and you basically just plug the fans straight into that. It's very, very straightforward. Probably the easiest cooler installation that we've done on the channel. Next up, we're going to connect up the lighting and it's the same thing. It's these small little lighting connectors and the other cable coming from the pump top is labeled LED and just rinse and repeat that process and plug in all of the lighting connectors. Very, very easy. Wow, I wish every cooler was this easy to install. Okay, let's move on. There's a SATA power or SATA power, depends where you are in the world on how you pronounce that. Uh, yeah, just plug that into a SATA power connector from your power supply and you should be good to go and the thing will get all of the power required. Last but not least is the USB connector. What you want to do is actually feed this through to the underside of the board, usually where USB headers are located. Locate a USB 2.0 header on your motherboard and plug that cable straight into the motherboard. Once you plug that in, you should be good to go with the next part. We're going to take a quick look at the software. Right, so you'll need to install both RGB Fusion and Aorus Engine. I'll put links in the description down below for these downloads. And basically you can configure it to do anything that you like. You can put custom logos. You can do all of the different lighting configurations. You can control the pump top and the fans individually of one another. It's pretty straightforward stuff here. I'm, I'm just, it's just, just for demonstration purposes. I'm not going to dive too deep into this because it's actually very, very straightforward. Now, if you're wanting to display the CPU temperature, you will need to have Aorus Engine installed. Um, yeah, Aorus Engine just allows you to create fan curves for both the pump and the fans themselves. And yeah, it's not too complicated. And like I mentioned, this is one of the easiest software setups for a cooler that I've seen in a very long time. I would have liked it better if they used one bit of software for the fan curves and stuff, but I also understand why they don't. But yeah, that's it. You're all done. And if you were lucky, it should look a little something like this.
I covered pretty much everything in this video. If you've got any questions though, head on over to our Discord or drop a comment down below. Or make sure you read the comment section because myself or someone else probably would have answered your question already. Please take that into consideration before asking any questions. I only say that because honestly, I just don't want you to waste your time. <laughs> yeah, I've included links to all the software required for everything in this installation as well down in the description just to save you a little bit of time. If you like this video and it helped you, Please like and subscribe. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peek. We seek. And this new Aura School is pretty cool. I really, really like that screen. If you do want to see us do like a full review with thermals and all that stuff, let us know in the comments section below. Uh, there's been quite a few people who have already asked for it, but yeah, we'll get around to it if there's enough interest. Thanks for watching.